Now, getting to the why you can't trade, and then I want to make sure I add in, unless you want to. And next week or next few weeks, I'm going to touch upon what you could do if you really want to, obviously. So I don't want to just throw out, I hate people to throw out a problem and be like, oh, it's a problem. You know, <laughs> what good does that do? But the number one reason you can't trade is it's harder than it looks. And I think that if you can't put a trading system on a cocktail napkin, then you should toss it out. And I, I think that more complex systems can be boiled down to much, much more simpler systems. And I'd be willing to bet that. And, and I've said this a thousand times before, but I'll be in these presentations. I'd never call anybody out, but somebody will show their system and there's all these buys and sells and buys and sells all over the place, 100 or so or whatever on the chart. And it's a trend. And if you look at just when it rose above the moving average, maybe put in a few bars of Landry light and stayed long as, as long it was above the moving average, then you'd have had two trades, a buy and a sell, and you'd have captured the entire trend instead of all the in and out, in and out, in and out that they did. Nothing wrong with all this research, and, and they might uh, have exception with all this HG uh, stuff I'm talking about and volatility research, so I get it. But for the basic core methodology, methodology easy for me to say, let me unstick my tongue, that's pretty much it. Identify a trend, figure out your entry, put your stop in a place where you would be wrong, okay, for at least a swing trade, and be able to at least ride out a swing trade, I should say. And then you want to have initial profit target and gradually loosen that stop. So here's my what I call my nutshell screen. Again, nice trend, a pullback. And by the way, I did have napkins made. I should have sent you guys some napkins when I sent out the... Uh, I cleaned out my shelves and, and uh, sent my books away. <laughs> I should have threw some napkins in. Anyway, an entry is if the market begins to rally, obviously you don't want to try to catch the falling knife. We put in a stop because we can be wrong on every trade. I'm going to talk a lot about stops in a few minutes. And then we take partial profits on the swing trade. We kind of ratchet that stop up on a bit of a one-for-one -one basis on the first half of the position, although as I've been saying quite a bit, and if you follow the service archives, www.davelander.com slash archives, you'll see that I'm a little bit more lenient on the first loaf, and that's, that's helped me to capture more both swing trades and longer term trades. Because if you get knocked out on a swing trade, then you're out of the position and you'll never make any money on a longer term trade, right? And believe me, it happens. We got knocked out, knocked out of one today. It just flat out didn't work. It happens. Be able to sign on that stage. So if we're blessed with that partial profit in the swing trade, at this point in time, our stop is brought up to break even, even if that happens intraday. So let's say we're looking for $20 a share, it hits $20 a share, our stop is four points behind. We immediately bring that up to 16, which would be the same as our entry. And now we are free rolling, so to speak. And as that stock moves more and more in our favor, we gradually loosen the stop. That's it. I know. Well, I think one of the reasons why trading is so hard is because it looks so easy. The elbow is near, but try to bite it. And <laughs> how many of you try to bite your elbow the first time I said that? It's crazy, huh? I threw this one in last minute because it, it was a I've got a whole plethora, like I said, of slides. And and I thought it was very relevant. And the bottom line is, and, and you know, do I always do it? No. Am I interviewing myself? Yes. But if you just follow a simple setup, something like a Landry Light pullback or a TKO or something like that, and that's all you did, and you make sure you put your stop in a place where you're obviously wrong, and then just simply do that math, you could do it on a spreadsheet. I'll give you the spreadsheet. In fact, if you're a member, it's under members resources, davelander.com slash members. And then you'll look at a little menu there and it says members resources. That's where the spreadsheet is. So you can track your own trades. Anyway, that automatically, if you could figure out your entry and your stop, then your initial profit target is already done for you. And then the, the amount of shares are calculated too. 
But anyway, as I've said a thousand times before we moved to this brand new house here that we built ourselves, well, we had built, I guess, we didn't build ourselves. <laughs> we were living in a much, 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 much older home and then we've had a leaky pipe or something. My wife said, all you need to do is get your wrench and go and fix it. And then three hours later, soap and you know, phone a friend, four trips to the plumbing store. My wife went to the plumbing store once. I want four of everything you have in here. <laughs> because I'd sit her back and forth about six times. And it's never as easy as it looks on the surface. Now, along the lines of, of plumbers, and this is something that I added in late last minute, and I think it's important. Unlike doctors, lawyers, automatic transmission mechanics, and plumbers, there is no clearly defined career path when it comes to trading. People and, and I see it happen over and over and over again. In my Trading Simplified shows, I've been talking a lot about how to think like a trader. And, and the reason I, or the inspiration for that, I should say, is that a friend of mine, his son was interested in Robinhood. And I said, yeah, it's a great app for kids. You know, I'm excited because it's bringing them into the markets. But as you get a little older, you probably want to move away from Robin Hood and move into something bigger. So his kid got into it, then he got into it, and his wife got into it. And it's like, yeah, we want to be traders, Dave. We're going to watch your videos and, and all this other stuff. But as soon as the market goes against them, they make mistake. They make um, they begin to reason why it shouldn't be going against them. So that was kind of the whole genesis of that. But anyway, if you want to become a plumber. After two to three years of education or apprenticeship, plus another year or two of plumbing experience, you can become a journeyman plumber. After another one to five years of professional plumbing experience, depending on the state, you're eligible to sit for the master plumbing exam. So there's a very clearly defined career path to be a plumber. Obviously, a clearly defined career path to be a doctor or a lawyer. Oops, I'm getting chills. A doctor, a lawyer or an automatic transmission mechanic. Sorry about that. Anyway, so there is no clearly defined career path. And in the past, I have worked really hard to define that path. And I reached a point a few years back where I've, I've got horrible carpal tunnel in both um, hands and I've got a cube. I've already had one surgery on my elbow and as there's more in, in, in the cards and, and it's like, I can't keep living like this. I realized, and I said, you know, I'm also pretty inefficient trying to deal with, with one email at a time, one person at a time. It's like, I've got to figure out a way to let more people understand what I'm saying. And, and even though I thought I was giving all this one-on-one -on -one attention, come to find out I was inefficient in doing it. And once I created a learning management system it's like all of a sudden people, things begin to click. And then the missing piece from that to bring all that together was having a Facebook group where we can all meet up, talk about trades. What do you think about this trade? What do you think about that trade? Hey, I'm going in on this. You guys want to join me, et cetera, et cetera. That has really helped out tremendously. So I, I really think, not to soft sell anyone here that's not a member, but I really think through the membership, I have created that career path and any question that is unanswered, I did quite a few Q&A sessions and I no longer see the need to do any unless somebody really has something they really want me to cover in a lot of detail. But I don't see the need to do any, at least for a while, is because we're covering all that through the daily interaction. So I think I am working hard to define that career path. 